Hi everybody, welcome back. Today it's kind of a blog slash tutorial. <clears throat> I'm going to talk today about how you create your own magic tricks and the process I went through because I had a lot of really good feedback on a little card trick I performed recently in the Christchurch Park in Ipswich and I thought some of you might benefit from how do you do the process rather than just the techniques themselves so you can create your own tricks. And I thought of this idea because I'm a teacher by day in a school and I was trying to explain how to write a paragraph or an essay and it still uses the same rule. So today I'm going to quickly cut to the video of me performing in the park. Quick trick for you today in Christchurch Park. This one I'm going to use my phone. I'm going to show you there's nothing in it. And a deck of cards. So you've all used a printer or a photocopier. But have you ever seen how a magician does it? A magician takes a blank. And he puts it in there. Now the reason I use a phone is it has a magnet. Now it's all nice and secure. Then we give the cards a little shuffle. And we take a card. Say stop camera lady. Stop. There you go. One card. The five of spades. We put it on there, and you've seen how a photocopy works. We go like this. And then we open, we take the blanks, and we've made a copy. And now I'm going to teach you how it's done and the whole process involved. So, the start of a trick process for creation is to actually reverse things. You want to start at the end. What do I want to have as the end result, the effect, the, the wow? And once you figure out what do I want to end the trick with, you work backwards, looking at your tools of how to then create the trick. Never ever think, oh, I've learned a really cool move. What can I use that for? Sometimes you'll learn some cool moves and you'll just practice them for the use, the fun of it. You may never use them. Oh, I spent two years learning a move called C3, which I taught elsewhere on my channel. Um, I'll put a link for that if I remember there. That move I'd learned, and I spent two years working on that move. I didn't try to force it into anything. Um, now it's a move I use quite a lot. And so how did that my trick in the park start? I thought, well, get a mobile phone. They're fairly straightforward. Everybody knows them. Everybody can recognize a mobile phone. So therefore, they're not suspicious. And then there was nothing suspicious with the phone. I deliberately showed the insides and everything as you've seen. But everybody knows what a phone can do. So then if I do something amazing with it, it's, it's more impressive. It's, it catches your attention. So then I thought, well, what could I do? Sorry. I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I could do a transposition effect where one thing swaps for another? Where, and I thought, well, it, because you can seal it, you put something therefore in once you've sealed it. Then I thought, well, wouldn't it be kind of cool if it made it a blank card turned into a, a valued card? So now I've got my final effect. I thought, I'm gonna put a blank, I'm gonna have a blank turn into their card. And then I spent quite a while thinking, how will I achieve that? And I came up with two different approaches. One involved drawing their card and one involved not drawing their card, using an actual card. So right. now I'm gonna go over the shoulder and I'll explain how the trick's done. And as I'm going through, I'll talk you through my process a bit more. So I hope you find this useful. And I really look forward to people coming up with their own tricks and sharing them with me. So let's go over the shoulder. Okay. So what you need to do with this trick uh, much like the other video I posted this weekend, is blank faced cards. So I said in that video, if you've watched that one, you do get some use out of these things. And I didn't even use Sharpie, so and a phone. Now, do, do make a point of showing it if you're going to overfill this trick. And you need one other thing, a card from another deck. Yes, I used two of the same card. In this case I used the five of spades. 
it's easy when you know the method, isn't it? So my idea was that I would get a blank card and yeah, I'll go in. That'll be cool. Now oh, I'm using red, so right today. So one thing I would remember is, unlike me, make sure the backs are the same colour for this trick. I thought it would be really cool if I did that, locked it with the magnet, and then their card. Boop. So I had to think, how am I going to get this card in there? So then I have to start working backwards. Well, I need to show the card. I need it to be inspected. <clears throat> so I thought, well, I try. I considered a few moves like the KM move and double lifts and um, top changes. But a good rule of thumb is to kiss it. Keep it simple, stupid. Don't kill it. What's the simplest thing I could possibly do to achieve this effect? Put the two together on the top of the deck and have a break underneath. Now, if you're taking them out of a box preset up, I would put that one on the bottom, set up like that, take them out of the box. While you're talking to the audience, do a little pinky count. Or do a push off, get ready. So I thought, I'm at this point now. Okay, yeah, now I can just show the card. Now, I do want to show it like that, so you'll notice I did it with a bit of a twirl. It's more convincing, it's a bit more showmanship. Put it back on the deck. Everybody thinks that was one card. So now I can just put that one there. The trick is just half done. So I'm working backwards. I was like, so I've got the middle, I've got the end. So now I need to get the same card picked. So then I just used a force. Now for any magicians out there who are a bit more experienced, you know there are loads of ways to get somebody to pick the card you want. I used um, what I call the Melt Force. It's got a proper name, but I saw it in a trick called Melt. This kind of business going on. But there's loads. So I had it on the bottom already. And then you can either shuffle it and control it to the top, which is what I think I do in that video. I just... Quick shuffle, quick shuffle. Retain the top card. Keep in. The original one from this deck there. Now, if you're not, if you're new to forces, the simplest force in the world is this: you ask the spectator to cut the cards, then you do. It's called a cross-cut force, and then you talk to them for a minute, and they forget what you've done, and you go, "Okay, look, we cut to this card. There you go." There are loads of forces. I don't use that force. I don't like it. I have a bunch of others I use. You'll see in the video. I like the Hofsinza force. I don't really like the classic force. To be honest, I'm not very good at it. Um, I practice it. I'm not very good at it. So when I'm performing, I use the ones I'm good at. Practice the ones you're not good at, because one day you might want to be able to do them. But keep it simple. What's a nice, simple way to force a card? Well, you could go if it's on the bottom. If you kept it on the bottom, it's a bit suspicious, you see. So I shuffled it and controlled it to the top. You can go cut, pinky break. You go, say stop. It's called a riffle force. They say stop. You go, there you go. That one. Or the cross cut force or any other force you like. Because the next step of the trick was, I, how do I get them to pick the card I want? I don't want a random card. Once I've done that, the rest is just showmanship. Ooh. Open, reveal, everybody goes, wow. Now for those looking at this trick now, they go, oh, it was really obvious. It was really simple. Yes, it was. But when you first saw it, it made you go, wow, that's what I'm looking for. It's not so much about me revealing the secrets today. This is a trick I created. I do what I like with it. But it's, it shows the process. Start at the end of the trick, work backwards. If you were to go, oh, I've got this really cool move. What can I do with it? Your end result's not going to be very good. I mean, the other option I considered was to get them to pick a card and then draw it and then make a, a photocopy and that comes or vice versa but I decided it was just too unreliable so by practicing it and maybe showing it to someone who you can trust you can do quite a lot so yeah 
that's how I create that trick. That's how that trick's done, if you ever want to perform it. If you're thinking, how can I um, transport this trick? If you're one of those who carries lots of cards and things around, most phones have a little pouch here. So you could just keep two of them in there, really. Then you do, then you go to perform, you take them out, you set your deck up, where's that? The other five, somewhere in the middle. There it is. And then you are good to go. If you want to know how I did the spinny thing, just get two cards, middle finger and thumb, and just go, and just literally pivot it. And with a bit of a gesture, it, it's quite cool to look at. It's quite a cool fidgety thing to do too. So there you have it. That's A, how I created that trick. I haven't really named, let's just call it the card copier or the photocopying telephone or whatever. And yeah, then it's the same. I've created a few other tricks and moves over the years. Um, the helicopter car color change, things like that. I just thought, how do I want it to end? So I hope that helps. Um, I haven't got a trick performance for you this weekend, but you've got some nice tutorials to begin on with. Thank you for watching. Keep subscribing. Keep letting me know what you like. And yeah, thanks for all the support, everyone. Have a great weekend.